Welcome. I am Stephen Fox. And I am making comics. Hey, this is Steven again. Welcome back to Making Comics. Um, it's been a couple of months since I was able to upload anything new, so <laughs> uh, this episode the, has a lot of ground to cover. Uh, just to give you guys just a, uh, a quick overview of what I've been up to, um, <clears throat> just like everybody else, life has been really unpredictable this year, so I've had to pivot a couple of times, and I've had um, a couple of thoughts and uh, discoveries along the way that, that changed my approach to things. Um, Excel is still, um, I still plan on starting the, illustrating the pages um, in the next month, but uh, in the meantime, I ran across several crowdfunding campaigns that kind of inspired me uh, to pick up an old property of mine, clean it up, and um, potentially pitch it to some publishers, and if not, take it to crowdfunding. If I, uh, regardless, I'll give you guys um, up to date on the process, and I'll uh, make a video about either pitching it to publishers or creating a crowdfunder, uh, which that would be my first crowdfunding pro uh, project. So, um, just to kind of give you uh, a little bit of background onto the the project that I'm referencing, um, it's uh, couldn't be more different than Excel. Uh, it's actually called Nex. Um, uh, those of you who know me a little bit might know that I grew up. In Tennessee, I've lived here my whole life, um, and uh, grew up in a, a part of Tennessee called Crossville, and then moved to Cookville, and ran into a lot of different types of Southerners. And um, as a result, I, I, I just some of them were just like anywhere you live. Uh, there were some interesting characters. So Nex is a play on Rednecks, but it's an affectionate um, kind of play on that. Uh, it's about four best friends who are abducted by aliens late one night after leaving Bobby's Wings and Auto Repair. They're, it's like their central perp. They're abducted and mistakenly injected with Martian combat enhancers instead of the standard memory wipe, which would erase their memories completely. Um, these combat enhancers react with their genetics and give them abilities that reflect kind of their personalities and their, their uh, DNA. So anyway... Um, I've done a, a pretty significant amount of work on Nex. Um, I gave it up because I was approached by um, several opportunities um, to uh, write. Um, I got to write several screenplays, and then I got to pitch some show ideas, including Nex, to different um, different entities that that potentially might have some interest. Um, none of it worked out, and honestly, that makes a lot of sense because um, if you think about how many people have ideas and how many proposals um, executives see, uh, it's a one in a hundred shot to get a pitch, and then it's probably closer to one in a hundred thousand to actually see a project come to light. Um, if you have a, a creative friend who's ever tried pitching a concept um, to a network or a studio, then you know uh, there are just a tremendous number of hurdles. And it's a painful process. To be honest, I got some feedback that um, was really helpful. Uh, I tried to always scrutinize it fairly. Uh, but I got some really uh, duplicitous kind of interactions, and it just jaded me significantly. So uh, instead of continuing to pursue that where I felt like I would continue to run into personalities that I, didn't, um, that I wasn't congruent with, I decided to come back and start working on my own concepts. Uh, Excel was the one that was resonating with me at the time because it's about a middle-aged man who is given the abilities of a supernatural entity, um, and uh, I would related to it. It's really about midlife, uh, which is something that I'm somewhat going through right now. Um, <clears throat> anyway, but in the process of doing that, I ran across a couple of indie publishers and also some crowdfunders that um, made me wonder if. If next might have, um, hey Lee, yeah. I'm recording something, kid. What? I'm recording something. Sorry, I didn't mean to. But after 
seeing some of these concepts, I just had uh, the feeling that maybe next. Um, I don't I don't know how big it could be, but I I would like to try and and crowdfund it. And I think it's a pretty good property that's pretty well thought out. So, um, anyway, so getting right into it. So back in 2012, when I originally created the story, this was, it was a widescreen format, and it was actually designed to be part of a, a digital comics platform that a friend of mine and I were working to establish. Um, and you can kind of see how it would be formatted for those um, widescreen at the time, back in 2012. It's still, the aspect ratio is not exactly perfect, but this was the original version um, of the book, as you can see, with um, a two-page interview in the back, it ends up being 60 pages. Um, so it's not an ins it wasn't an insignificant effort. Um, these are the little aliens that abduct them. Um, the, the next, if we go back to that previous page, you'll see their ship is designed to look like a McDonald's. Um, <laughs> they franchise, franchise out their technology um, to various... Um, factions to abduct and collect data on different species across the galaxy uh, with humans being a very ripe for the plucking um, kind of group. So <clears throat> from here, um, like I said, they're abducted. That's the spaceship sucking them up and uh, they're experimented on and injected with the wrong thing, taken prisoner and then their powers begin manifesting one at a time until, um, like, this is Ricky, his arms morph into all sorts of different kinds of technology. Um, <laughs> this is actually, there's a fifth character, uh, this guy right here, um, uh, Billy, who actually has, he's a super speedster, but he, I don't want to give too much away, but through the course of the story, he disappears from the main narrative. Um, Brett is... For all intents and purposes, he's the main character. Uh, he's just kind of a uh, relaxed, uh, cocky hero. Um, he, even though he um, is super strong and has the physique to match, his gut, his uh, beer gut is still, it doesn't go away even when he is in his super powerful form. Um, there's this little faction, Pink Piece. Uh, they represent a group that wants to um, advocate for humans. Um, they're called Pink Peace because they're all pink on the inside. All humans are pink on that side. But they're not as um, selfless as you'd think. They actually think humans are stupid and they they need protection because they're not able to uh, adequately protect themselves from themselves so or from the adoyance. Anyway, they're just a, an anti-corporate entity. Um, this little guy down here, this is Keith. Uh, you can see him. He is a changeling um, in previous pages. Um he <laughs> he always has his red hair, um, and he's always blue. Uh, so here you can see um, Billy bumps into him and turns him into... He ends up turning into an alien by accident, and it, that's his default form from then on. So he can turn back into a human, he's just not quite sure how, and it requires some concentration. Anyway, so these are all the, the different characters of Nex. Um, there are a couple of more, but I don't want to wear you out with it. So th the problem is, if I'm going to crowdfund this thing, um, the format is not ideal for a standard comic. Uh, so <clears throat> what I did, in order to be able to pitch it to publishers, I began reformatting enough pages to um, put together a proposal. Uh, so this is the first several pages. Um, the cover is a little bit of a play on the Justice League of America by Kevin McGuire. Um, and then we got here just an introduction. The letters, the lettering, everything was done by me except the lettering, which was done by uh, Eric Weathers. Um, he used to do a crowdfunder called Battle Brick Road. Battle Brick Road that is uh, a really cool reinterpretation of um, the kind of the land of Oz. Um, so if you're into crowdfunding and science fiction, fantasy, it's it's a pretty cool idea. Um, anyway, so you can see how these pages have been reformatted, recolored, and um, the character designs have been updated. I'll kind of track along so you can see what the original pages look like. First, the cover. There's a lot I like about this cover, but there are a few problems with it um, that keep it from 
uh, really reflecting what I wanted. Um, here we've got this same page but laid out slightly different on the new one. Um, so I think this works better. It's four panels instead of uh, the three and it just paces it out a little bit better. Um, so and then we go from there to Bobby's which um, one of the things I really like about transitioning into the the different format is I was really able to get into um, the background of Bobby's like you can see what it looks like inside here um, back behind when um, I just didn't have enough space to really get into all that um, so because back then actually if I remember right um, I don't know if retina was out I think we were dealing with 72 dpi so you're talking about a lot of pixelation um, for the web so um, anyway, well, I accidentally jumped ahead. So you can kind of see the work that went into reinterpreting those pages. It was pretty significant. I'm actually really happy with how they turned out though. Um, I may or may not continue the rest of the process. Uh, one of these things that I really love about the idea of Next is I wanted to do, I always loved Who's Who and uh, DC Universe, anything that gave background on, um, that gave background on what I was reading, um, like the technology or any of that. Um, so this is a schematic of the alien spaceship. It gets crazy detailed. Um, uh, the original version is like 600 DPI, so you can see all this. But you can see you have all the different levels and the facilities that are on board the ship um, done in an, an oblique kind of cutaway. And then just a quick explanation of what all this is. I may put a link to this PDF um, in the description. I'll um, just because I think it's kind of fun. And it gives you a little bit of insight into what I wanted to talk about today, which is um, uh, addressing layout and approaching how to lay out pages and uh, covers and that kind of thing. This is going to be a long video, but um, it's a little bit me catching you guys up on what I've been doing. So <clears throat> uh, that was the first project. The second one was um, I submitted next to a, um, one publisher that came back and asked if I had any uh, one to ten page stories and I for some reason I heard him as one to twelve page so um, what I did is I put together a, a twelve page story um, which as you guessed is longer than he requested but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask if that's alright but here we have a ten page or a twelve page story about uh, my one of my favorite bad guys in the next universe which is the Chigger and the Chigger uh, is a complex hated uh, fellow who lives with his mother um, he's 27, been married three times, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, long and short, um, he feels called to be a, a, the harbinger of an entity called uh, Chigger Prime. So uh, he has gone to Allmart to evangelize the arrival of this creature um, and uh, use his powers to control any Chigger within a 10-mile radius. Um, <laughs> uh, to basically force uh, Buck Snort, which is where Nex is based, uh, to listen. So this is, I'm only going to show the first couple of pages, um, but check out this color. Um, I had the option of hiring a letterer again, or um, I have a good friend who is just a fantastic uh, artist, and he does this amazing color. And um, I mentioned to him in passing that color wears me out. Um, it takes me as long to color as it does to ink it, really. And he was like, well, why don't you give me a shot? And so instead of, I, I took my hand at lettering just to see how it would go, and I had him color um, and just diverted those funds that way. And uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the result. If you look at these first three pages, this is just, I'm going to show you... Um, you know, this I was going to show you this later when we got into um, layout, but I'm going to go ahead and just take you to what my um, version of this drawing looked like. And the only difference here is the color. But if you look at this, I don't think it's bad. Um, I think the uh, my buddy Mike that I'm always referencing, you suck, Mike. Uh, he always. Uh, he does his best to give me honest feedback, and he, he pointed out that this seemed a little bit washed out, and it did, and I kept working with it, and I just never quite got it where I wanted it. But look at this. I mean, this sings. I mean, the textures are 
beautiful. Um, and I love how he did the radiant, the radial um, lines. Uh, whereas I kind of went overboard, I was messing with a half tone, which I like. But um, if you look in the future pages, he's able to incorporate that half tone idea in a much smoother way than I was. Um, it's just so slick. Um, like, look up here. I'm going to zoom in uh, just to show you the detail of the color. I mean, look at this. He's got a half tone pattern. Uh, it's a little too much. Um, but he even applied this half tone pattern to. Uh, I told him that I, I loved um, old-fashioned comics and that that um, kind of rough feeling, um, and he had he interpreted a little bit of that in some of this texture that looks like that old uh, dot CMYK approach that comics used to use. Um, anyway, it's just beautiful. And then look at these, look at the duct tape, man. Um, anyway, his name is Ryan Bray. Um, I'm gonna pop up his. Um, I'm going to put his profile links in my in the description. I'm also going to uh, just put his um, put those in at the end of the video as well because if you're looking for a he's just an amazing colorist and he's an awesome artist. He calls himself Delighted Ghost on um, Instagram and he's also on Twitter and everywhere else. But um, I don't push too many people to Twitter because it makes me negative. <laughs> so anyway. Um, and then I, I wanted to put together one other 10-page um, story, 12-page story. I, I know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I started on cleaning up. I had already drawn the first issue of Next, which was a 60-page um, extra-sized deal. And then I started on the second book, which was a 28-page deal. And I've consolidated that down to, the, to 12 pages, and I'll show you the first few pages um, of that. So we've got... <clears throat> this is a character from the first book. He was actually left floating in space. Um, I can kind of show you. Uh, let's do. Uh, anyway, if we if we back up a little bit, you can see that he was left floating in space, and this picks up immediately after that, or the next day at least. Goodness gracious. Anyway, this is him. His name's Brick. He's the head security guy for Adoyan Abductions. Um, so he is, <laughs> he's been holding his breath for a day or so <clears throat> just to prove how tough he is. And then, um, you don't know it, but this is an Adoyan Abductions um, battle mech um, that just happens to come colliding into the, the guy's uh, bar, Bobby's Wings and Auto Repair. Um, you can see, anyway, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, these submissions, basically my plan is to get the, through assembling um, three stories for next, two or three to submit, see if there's any interest with the publisher. If there's not, um, then I'll probably pursue crowdfunding, but instead of focusing solely on that, I um, am going to stop, put together the first issue of Excel um, while the crowdfund funding is going for next, and then um, probably pursue the same cycle with Excel. So anyway, uh, the, the reason that I put this together is to show you, um, a lot of people ask me what my process is if I work digitally um, or how I approach uh, just drawing out the pages. And um, there is a process to it that's kind of interesting, I think, so I figured I would start here. Uh, so I always start drawing freehand. Um, it's just, a, there's a natural connection. Uh, in my wrist to paper um, that uh, no matter how close the the tablet texture is it's just not exactly the same I mean I've, I've been drawing on paper since I was five and I'm 43 so it there's just a, a much more um, intuitive connection there so <clears throat> I always start you can see the pencil lines a very rough gesture um, sketches very rough gesture sketching and then I come back with a sharpie and don't worry about rendering at all I just block it out um, what I'm looking for in that second pass is just the rough geometric shapes um, and again I use the paper sharpie just glides on the on the paper really quick um, and it's permanent so it prevents me from overthinking it too much but here you can see um, very quickly the pencil marks uh, the number one goal of those is to reserve space, to reserve space, so that um, it's like if you are measuring, 
uh, before you put a couch in your room. But here you've got. But here you've got five couches that you have to measure before you um, before you move them in. So then when I come in with the Sharpie, what I'm looking to do is um, begin smoothing out the shapes. Um, I'm not, again, the first two phases I don't look, I don't worry about um, any sort of rendering, uh, any sort of texture or adding any real defining lines. Like even on Brett's face here, you can see that I didn't I didn't draw it in. I just left the pencil there uh, because I felt like that was a fair representation. So <clears throat> from here, I'll take a picture of it with my phone. Scanning is fine, but it takes a minute. What I do is I just take a picture with my phone in good lighting and send it to myself through AirDrop. Um, and then I start working on um, sketching it out with just the line work. So I'll show you, I'll drop the opacity down here on this. Um, let's see, just so you can see how they line up because uh, the reason that I work on a tablet for the lines is um, I approach drawing a lot like I approach writing. Um, I do it in four stages. Concept, which is the rough outlines that are reserving space. I do uh, what I consider to be an outline um, or the blocking in of the characters, where they're, what the space they're going to occupy and the composition, and then draft. Which actually the so the inking I consider to be the draft, um, and it, if you've done writing before, you know the draft is a malleable version of your of your writing. Um, you have to be able to to edit on the fly, and um, I like to get straight into the inks because I'm doing the whole show, and if I pencil it exactly the way I want to, and then go over it in ink. I'm adding about 50% extra work. So I go straight from, if you're inking your own work especially, I go straight from those um, blocks to the inking process. Um, and like you, you can see that I, don't, I am not beholden to it. Some of the figures I felt like would be better if they occupied a different amount of space. Tink here, and if I'm being honest, I actually prefer this more, this simpler silhouette of Tink's head. Uh, but that's not where it ended up, and I'm not going to redo it now. I'm just going to keep that version in my mind for the future. But I like his head, smaller proportion and and lower set. Maybe not that low set, but anyway. So here we have the inks, and um, from there I just begin building um, several different layers. One is so <clears throat> uh, first thing I do is I add the shadows which I believe are right here. And you can see that the, I'm gonna add the background white, just so, anyway. So here are the shadows, they're not super dark. Um, I don't use a, a black, I choose a dark blue. Um, it just makes for a, a better, more convincing shadow. Uh, I set it to multiply. Um, multiply essentially allows um, other colors through, so you get the same, you get a similar value on top of uh, different hues. Um, after I've established a good shadow without it being overwhelming, um, you don't want to overdo it or it, the, whole, the whole benefit is kind of lost. Um, then um, from there I will add in the base, the flats. Um, you can see if you're watching my screen, I do not name my, I don't, don't name them in a useful way. <laughs> so here we have the flat colors with the shadows and the inks. Um, and actually that looks pretty good. Um, but the last stage that I do to the main color is highlights. Um, and the highlights, um, let's see here, nope. See, this is why you need to name your layers more effectively. So the highlights, I choose a very saturated yellow. Um, and the, the blend mode is that I use is overlay. If I take this up to normal, you'll be able to see the standard color it's and actually it looks like this time I use more of a, a light orange kind of pinkish color but um, I put that on overlay and that just creates a nice three step to the depth uh, three steps to the depth of the the drawing uh, the last thing because this is kind of a pinup um, I wanted to add a um, radial effect that brought the focus on the characters um, and I 
set this up and then did a color halftone effect, which on uh, Photoshop is filter, pixelate, color halftone. You just have to mess with the settings there. Um, you want to make sure that the dots are not too big or too small. Um, and I tend to go with uniform um, for the settings, which I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, so if you go into the color halftone, um, oh, I'm thinking of something else. Anyway, the maximum radius, I usually work with eight, and that'll get you this pretty nice pattern. Um, and then I did a, <clears throat> then on top of that, I did a, um, this is called a layer mask, which accounts for that fade right here to white. Um, just look up, if you have any questions about that, um, actually I'll take that layer mask off and you can see that it goes all the way down to the bottom. So, <coughs> so. Um, that's my overall process for layout. Um, there's one last layer on this, the effects. That's basically just Ricky's blaster. Um, <clears throat> so the layout of a pinup is a little bit different, but I can kind of show you um, my approach to... Um, I can kind of show you my approach to pages as well. It's very similar um, conceptually, but <clears throat> here we have... Um, and for me, I always consider whatever I'm working on, if it's a creative endeavor, um, I consider it like building a house. Um, it's very easy when you're writing or drawing to skip um, the planning stages, but the <clears throat> they're just, uh, for me, there are a lot of benefits um, of going through that planning stage. So I have to do a lot of outlining and, and, uh, and the foundational work. And the same thing is true of the pages. Um, so here, um, the layout, I wanted it to be cinematic because we're just going through a, a da, 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 like a very one, two, three, four. Um, and just simplifying their story to the very basic beats, um, how they started. And then you'll notice it down here is a reflection of that same panel. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to set this to just show one page. So you can see, tell that these are reflections of each other, the before and after. Um, these the guys <clears throat> just hanging out as buddies and then as superheroes and it's a cool way to kind of show um where they're going to end up so um and as we this next page um you saw the layout process there but this isn't just a splash page i plan on making a poster for it uh, but it's also a um, sequential page that gives you an opportunity to learn about each individual character i wanted it to be clockwise so you kind of wrap around to the characters. Um, you're starting a little bit more at like, you know, uh, ten o'clock, but you get the you get the point. And then this question mark layout leads you right to the logo next, and then the credits, and then you get into the story. Um, one of my big influences for laying out this particular story was Todd McFarlane. Um, anybody who's a fan of his knows that he played a lot with overlapping panels. Um, odd panel shapes um, and just breaking it down into the fewest number of panels uh, that would be necessary <clears throat> and <clears throat> something I weren't uh, something that a piece of criticism that Eric gave me Eric Weathers gave me on uh, the previous set of pages was to plan a little more space for the for the text bubbles so that's something else that I try to account for with these pages um, you can kind of see so <clears throat> I love these um, long, wide panels because they give you an opportunity to be very cinematic. Uh, readers, of course, are going to move from left to right. So placing the word bubbles that way, um, just putta, 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 pow. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just creates a nice flow into um, the Allmark logo, and then, which kind of your eyes are meant to kind of zigzag through the page as you're moving across it. And Ryan did an excellent job <clears throat> of using reds to kind of pull you through. Um, the Chigger has his version of a, of a Batmobile. Uh, it's called the Chigger Mobile or the Chigger Wagon. He hasn't decided. Um, but you can kind of see how color, layout, all those different things work together to guide you through the page. And just like I did those sketches for that pinup, this all started as a sketch um, an erase, a sketch, an erase, and honestly a lot of editing happens when I'm working digitally. Uh, the other benefit to working digitally is 
you just can't do that that edit on the fly with ink and paper. Um, if I lay out a, a panel and I really don't like something, erasing the ink is a, a big pain. It requires cutting and um, just uh, several steps that are not um, conducive to the kind of time frame you want when you're trying to, to work on a comic. Um, and here, I, you know, this border is a little bit inspired by Todd McFarlane with uh, the chigger silhouettes creeping down. And I'll drop this word balloon below those chiggers just... But, um, <clears throat> and it, you know, just the, again, I was really trying to um, think about, keep Todd McFarlane in mind when it comes to uh, the layout of his panels, because he was exceptional with that graphic approach. And here we have um, the angle of the Allmark uh, building, and then coming back down, uh, you have this, this S that we're talking about, you can actually kind of see it in the blue and the black um, working through the page. So it just creates a nice flow. Um, and then the, my hope is the word balloons. Here we have a little bit of an issue where this word balloon kind of creeps in here. It's not, it's not a huge deal um, because typically we go, we scan left to right, go down, scan left to right. But that word balloon is so big um, that it could probably be balanced a little bit better so that it's not closer to this where you end on this panel than this next panel down here which actually is the next one in sequence so <clears throat> the long and short of it is when you're laying out a, a comic book page or a pinup uh, planning is the most important thing you have to you have to work on the flow you have to think through the flow of the page how to get your your reader's eye from one place to the next uh, that's something that i'm really challenging myself with on these pages um, and that, that doesn't mean that all my pages are going to work out. And honestly, I just reviewed a comic called uh, Can't Kill Cade that um, whew, is, uh, yeah, it's very humbling. And uh, it was very humbling reviewing that book because the layout is so much better than what I uh, have done in the past. But um, it's all about being challenged and just working to do better each progressive project, you know. So... Um, that's all I'm going to cover this time. Um, I do want to uh, specifically call out Ryan one more time. Um, he has, he's has he been a good friend for several years. We, I haven't seen him but once in my whole life. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, but he's just been a, a voice of encouragement um, and we haven't we haven't really worked on anything together until this, but it's been a blast, um, and his work has really blown me away. So give him a follow on Instagram. Uh, his handle there is uh, Delighted Ghost, um, and again, his name is Ryan Bray, B-R-A-Y. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for checking this out, and um, I'll be back on a more consistent basis. Thanks.